What's up, YouTube? Gym Leader Justin here. We've got a nice video for you today. We're playing some Cinderace in Ranked. Uh, full disclosure, I'm not a Cinderace main. I'm still practicing, but I felt good enough to bring it in Ranked for some dual queue the other day. We're running the new build with Razor Claw, Muscle Band, and Score Shield. Without further ado, let's get this video underway. Let's see what the bunnies got. Class is in session. Alright, so today we are playing ranked. I'm going top lane um, with the Blastoise. That's going to be PMC Sport Ninja. That's uh, Dougie for people who are following the channel. Uh, we're going to be dueling today. He was practicing some Talonflame, grinding the ladder, but obviously, as you can see here, one of the Randys picked Talonflame. So we're going to duo in a lane today. We're going to be Cinderace, Blastoise. So right here, there's not really much to talk about. It's just farming up the lane, going up here. So I am going to be running uh, Pyro Ball, and, which is the new uh, in the new patch. Pyro Ball got the buff as well as Flame Charge. Now, personally, I like Faint better than Flame Charge, but I was testing it out this game, as I already spoke about in the beginning. Uh, we're sort of testing it. I did quite a few test games in Standards, so I felt comfortable enough to bring it into Ranked uh, and show off this video today. So... Again, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Score Bunny, is, in my opinion, is one of the weakest like early game pokes. Like when I see a Score Bunny lane, I usually try to go pretty aggro and uh, Froki as well. I usually try to go pretty aggro because they're so squishy early and they don't have a lot of damage uh, early on. That's one of the reasons why we're running Razor Claw, so we get that extra burst of damage every time we hit the Ember. We can then auto attack, then we low sweep, then we auto attack, and we're weaving those in constantly, getting that extra Razor Claw proc, or, or you know, for League of Legends terms, the Sheen proc. Um, so Dougie and I both just go get the solo uh, crawfish or er, uh, corfish. We spot the Froki in the bush here, so we're just gonna take out. Uh, the the clone I get trapped in a hurricane so I'm just gonna button out be nice and safe I don't want to give up any early kills we're just gonna defend nice and farming up here it's sort of a boring early game we don't get to make a lot happen um, Doug unfortunately went in and missed his skull bash just barely so we are gonna get some nice poke trade it is sort of a boring lane but the the beautiful part about this build is when you get evolved and you get the pyro ball uh, when you actually get to level 7, you get to Cinderace, you can really start to spam. So the, the difference in this build now is because Pyro Ball's cooldown was reduced. Its damage was increased too, but the, the cooldown reduced is really the big deal here. So you can see I, I use my low sweep. We're getting 3 v 2 here. There's not really much we can do. We need our jungler to come bot. We need somebody to come bot, and they're just not rotating. So this is sort of a weird early game. Again, we're with Randy, so it's like, you know, not a whole lot we can do about it uh so we're just sort of farming and defending here but like i was saying with the new build you're basically going to be going uh pyro ball and then either faint or flame charge flame charge did get a damage buff uh i like i said i am going to be trying it out this game uh faint is really good though because it makes you invulnerable and you you can't be targeted you can like dodge out of ultimates and stuff it's actually really really strong um but so we do get picked up by another cheeky little uh surf hurricane combo there so again this is a really rough laning phase nobody's rotating pot they're kind of getting dumpstered top a little bit so we're like okay doug and i decide look we just need to farm up and we need to start taking control of this game in our own hands the two of us uh so i do get Raboot here finally evolve um but there's no evolutionary uh moves unfortunately that is one of the drawbacks of cinderace is that he does not get a new move when he evolves he's still just rabu so again team wasn't really rotating down and i accidentally get caught so all of a sudden it's like three deaths here and i'm like wow i'm really in a bad spot this is a a really poor early game we really need to we need to come together and really turn this game around or we're just going to get steamrolled so i jump down here i'm like all right so i'm just going to play safe i'm just going to kind of poke 
And I'm really worried about getting caught here. And I do. So, as you can see, four deaths to start this game. This is absolutely not how you want to start a game out. And you might be wondering, how did this even get uploaded with such a terrible start? Well, that's sort of the beautiful part about this new Cinderace build, is that you can kind of put the team on your back once you do get to Cinderace, and you fully evolve and you get that Pyro Ball. Uh, you can really start to carry team fights. The, the damage is actually really insane. Uh, the auto attack speed, just the auto attack damage... Uh, it really, really does stack up. So you can see here, I'm just farming, watching the minimap. I'm like, okay, Gengar's top. He's trying to get 40 in. I doubt he can, but, like, good on him, right? It's like, okay, we hit level 7. We got Pyro Ball. We got Cinderace. Now we're at our damage spike, right? We're, we're officially, like, Super Saiyan 1. So I'm like, okay, Doug, I'm coming up to you. Let's, let's group up with the War Turtle, and let's see what we can't do here. So I dodged back, presuming that they were going to shoot something at me. They didn't. So, again, I'm playing a little safe because I've already died four times. I'm trying to be really cautious. I'm, I'm trying to maximize my efficiency here now in that mid-state of the game. So I jump over the wall, and I shoot a Pyro Ball at the uh, Venusaur and just go in and take him out. So I, I definitely wanted to minimize the amount of damage I was taking from that big AoE. That's why I waited to go in at the end and sort of play in that Assassin build. And you can see that I can, I'm really not committing to the fight until I can see that there's a good opening for me. Boom! And I drop that ulti, or the Unite move, get the shield, get the move speed buff, and you can see right there, I'm again, I'm just kiting around the outside of the fight, just poking in damage with Fireball, poking in damage with auto attacks, and just helping my team out, making sure that I don't die. And now, that was the, t that was the fight where I got a bunch of experience and, and uh, gold in my pocket and points, but I didn't die for it. So that was kind of the turnaround point here. Is like, okay, we're at a good spot now, Doug. You're evolved to Blastoise. I'm Cinderace. Like, I just used my night move, but it's okay. We got the kills. Let's get in here, right? So again, I thought he was going to come for me. Boom, and he finally does. So I tried to dodge it out the first time, and you can see it didn't quite work. I thought I could outduel him here, and he does get the surf up. So, but our team was able to get the Dreadnought. So it's one of those things where it was like, it was sort of worth, because now you can see here, there oh, I should have turned to Dreadnought. That was absolutely my mistake. Again, I thought I could outduel him, and it, I wasn't, I was not correct here. So I'm like, okay, no problem. I'm, I'm honestly not worried about that death. I'm just gonna go top and defend. I know Doug is coming up behind me. Um, or he's, excuse me, Doug is caught bot lane right now in a team fight. So I know that I'm alone. So I'm like, I just have to defend without dying. I try to stop them from scoring points, and it doesn't quite go my way. But Doug ends up picking up a kill on the Cramorant. So he's like, all right, dude, I'm free. I'm allowed to roam top. Start playing a little bit more forward. Get with the team. Boom, that's what I do here. And I just pick up a nice, easy kill on the Greninja. And you can see here, from where I was positioned, he actually missed his Psy Shock. I was standing on just the outside of the bubble of the Gardevoir Psy Shock, so he didn't actually interrupt my goal scoring at all. And that is the key point where this game turned around. Because I was able to get those points in and now we're able to fight with this team fight right here i get the shield and the uh, hp and experience from that and we're able to clean up this team fight really handily in a 3v2 with the blastoise and the talon flame it's like all right doug's calling we got 55 seconds on screen before the zapdos comes up let's just get mid let's get control of this game now we're in a good driving spot right we had a rough early game but that's okay we are now in a really good spot. We have the combat mechanics. We can absolutely make this happen. So you can see there, we, we wait for the bait in the bush, and we drop the Gardevoir, which is a massive Unite ultimate down for the enemy team that they will not be able to have for the Zapdos fight. So right here, boom, just barely get out by the by the skin of my teeth. The uh, the enemy Venusaur almost clipped me there with the... with almost interrupted me, but we're back in the fight bot lane. You can see that I'm just playing the back line. I'm letting the Venusaur play sort of like that monkey in the middle, and I'm making sure that I'm keeping him in between me and the enemy damage. And I'm just pyro ball and auto attacks over the shoulder of my allies. That's the key to playing a good Cinderace, is making sure that you're not in the front. And obviously, as you could tell earlier on in the game, I wasn't playing that safe, and that's why I died a bunch early. So you can even tell just in this game, I adjusted my play style, and boom, we start to take out these team fights because I'm playing more of that uh, traditional kind of front to back play style. Personally, that's how I think Cinderace is best played, is when you have a meat shield in front of him, and he's just allowed to free fire from the back line. So, we pick up the Zapdos. I have 50 points. This is looking really, really strong. I'm like, I don't honestly think we can get 
I, this is what I'm calling in the Discord chat. I don't think we can get it in top. So I'm like, let's just go mid and just get the auto dunk because we have the OP Zapdos insta scoring. And that's exactly what we do. So me, the Gengar, and the Venusaur end up going in there and getting our points in, which is just massive. So right here, I'm just sort of hanging out the Gengar. Doug is calling to go back and defend. So that's exactly what I do. <clears throat> I hit the B button. I'm back on Super Jump, you can see the Blastoise right there already on the Super Jump, and we're both ready to go. We see that the Gardevoir and the Snorlax pops top, and we go to Super Jump for that perfect defense, if I do say so myself. The PMC crew coming in hot, pun intended. So we pick up the two kills, we pick up all the points, and unfortunately nobody else went bot to stop the Greninja. There's, again, there's only two of us, like there's nothing, <laughs> there's not a whole lot we could have done there to, to go bot and top at the same time, so... Just something to point out, if you are, you know, playing this, if you, even if you're a Randy, just be aware of, like, where you should be uh, on the map. So, right here, we pick, I see that the Greninja's coming back here, and I'm like, I'm just going to wait mid, and I'm just going to pick up that kill, right? Like, this is super free. So, then we just rush. I use my Unite move move speed, and we just rush mid, and I score another cheeky 44 points because of the double scoring inside of the two minutes. Everybody, regardless if you get Zapdos or not, the whole field gets double scoring. So that's really, really strong here. So we're just going to clean up the um, clean up the jungle. I get another 11 in my pocket. I'm like, hey, there's only four seconds. I'm going to get another cheeky 22. So that's what I do here because, like, the enemy team essentially just, like, kind of gave up in that last 10 seconds. They didn't keep coming out of the base. They just sort of stood there. They knew that they had the game sort of lost. They threw the lead that they had. Well, they had a really strong team comp, but they just weren't rotating around enough, and they, they kind of overextended, to be perfectly honest. And it allowed Doug and I, with good coordination and good damage and, you know, playing that front to back, and look at that. Look at that. We didn't score until, like, over halfway into the game. That was insane comeback. But that just shows the power of that new Cinderace build. Did I play it perfect? Absolutely not. I did. I think I died, like, five times that game. It's atrocious. But this is a perfect example of, like, A, never surrender, and B, like, you still have those, you got to play for your damage spikes. Once I got the Cinderace and, and Pyro Ball, I knew that I had a big damage spike, so we played towards that power spike in the game. I was like, okay, I have the Razor Claw, this is what the build is supposed to do, let's go force team fights, play it correctly, and we win the game. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm Gym Leader Justin, class is dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.